Hello, today I thought I'd talk about this unreleased game that we were working on a while back. Uh, this is a prototype that I was developing on my own uh, for a little space game. So basically if you run it, it's mouse controlled. Uh, you can't shoot or anything, but when you move the mouse in a direction, the ship goes in that direction. It's all smooth. Um, and then if you like if your reticle is close to a box, it'll target that box, right? Uh, and then you have like this mock UI all over the place. Um, I also made it so that you can't escape out. <laughs> so I got an Alt F4. Yeah, so this took me a little bit because um, I thought I would like making a space shooter game, but then realized I didn't have that much fun making it. So then I'm like, you know what? What's a good way to make make me work harder at this game. So what's something that I can do to make me want to keep working on this game? How about increasing the complexity and also turning it into a 3D platformer? So what I did uh, was I was talking with Jared and I was like, you know, I don't know if I like this game that much. So then I started working on this. And then he's like, well, what if you use the ship and stuff still? And it's like, you know what? I can make a game where you're a little boy and some alien steals your PB&J sandwich and you got to fly in your ship and get vengeance. So then I made this. Uh, so you move around. The camera kind of follows you. Uh, notice how the player kind of tilts in the direction they're moving. But sorry for my clickety-clackety keyboard. Jump. Uh, WASD controls the camera and arrow keys controls your movement in this build. Uh, hitting S resets the camera behind you. So I can jump here. Jump up here. And then I had like this corn because the corn was going to be like the one of the collectibles because why not? Looks like garbage. Yeah, so uh not going to go into much detail about <laughs> the decision making on these things, but basically let's start with the ship here. Uh, you can see there's this big cylinder. Uh, basically, this is a, uh, what is this, a targeting area. So it's an area, th uh, th area 3D is what it will be called in a future version of Godot, but it's just an area. And if a enemy typed thing pops into that area, then it'll get all of those things that are in the area and then sort them by distance, and then it'll move the shoot reticles Z position to the distance of the object, right? Um, we got these guns. Um, if you notice in this scene, when something is not targeted, the guns just look straight. When something is targeted, the guns look at the targeted item, and it's got like a stickiness to it, and the stickiness is purely a side effect of the size of this uh, targeting area right here. So if you look at the space scene, these boxes look super far away when you run this, but they're actually like right in front of the player there. So that's the whole space thing. Uh, I guess like to explain the UI, like you have your health, energy, maybe like some kind of radar or item slot, some kind of like ability slots. And I think I was gonna have it so you can have like a crew um, in the original version of the space game, when it was only going to be a space game, that'd be a cool idea to have like a crew and you play as like a ship that's an AI and you like gather crew as you get farther. And then you can like use your crew as currency to unlock certain abilities at different planets. Um, and then I got tired of making a space game. So then I'm like, well, why don't I throw a 3D platformer onto it? That'd make it a lot easier to want to work on. <laughs> uh, so yeah, again, Move around, player kind of tilts with your movement, and you can move the camera. And S switches the camera to behind you. It's like a camera reset button. I think I uh, stopped working on this around the time I was starting to work on the camera uh, colliding with things. Um, not because I didn't think I could do that, but because I just got kind of tired of making a overly complex, huge, massive space uh <laughs> 3d platformer full-on game maybe one day anyway so how this works we got the little boy character here uh 
He's just animated like statically, like uh, where he doesn't rotate, he doesn't like tilt in his animation. That's all handled in code. So like when they're walking towards the camera, you see how it's tilting a little bit because the camera is rotating. They're walking away from the camera. He's not tilted. That's like how it is, and all the tilt is handled with the code. All right, let's take a look at this guy. So I did have to do a lot of like basic trigonometry type stuff, cross products and junk. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I don't exactly remember how the math works, um, but just so that you're aware, uh, all I had was an idea of what I wanted to do. And then I just Googled a bunch of math stuff uh, and figured out like, you know, I, I want this character to tilt based on uh, how big the angle is from straight, right? So if you know you want to look something like, you, you want something to behave at a ratio of like how far away from straight is something, then you need to know how can I calculate the angle of forward to where the, the player is looking. And then how do I know uh, like the difference between the angle of like 180 degrees from the player uh, where the player is looking to, you know, 180 degrees behind that. Basically, what I'm trying to say is if, if you know like enough about math, like understanding the words of what you need to look up, then you can just look up the things and figure out what kind of math you need to do to get things to happen the way you want. Like looking back at this code that I wrote uh, like a few months ago, uh, I have. I, I I don't remember <laughs> what what any of this math is, but like you know, if I if I took a little bit of time and I looked at this, I could I could realize what it's supposed to be doing, um, math wise. Uh, but when you're first writing it and you're just like, oh, I want this character to do something based on an angle. As long as you like know enough about angles to describe them, then you can just Google the math, uh, or like Google how to tell angle from something or how to tell yeah anyway knowing the difference between radians and degrees and yeah basic trigonometry anyway so that was a great explanation and because of all that the player can do <laughs> this <laughs> yeah anyway thanks for watching